I hate to say this, but I am such a pretty motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. man. Push up. Parker! Get ready! I'm ever ready for some lightweight shit, so you better come with something heavy and pack with dynamite. of the station is. Bostick says my job is to play records. And man, he ain't about to let me make no announcements about the activities of this organization. Frankie, I've known you since our first year at Central State. You were honoring in class, all of the whole damn campus for that matter. And now all of a sudden you're gonna come up water in your veins because of some jive radio station owner? Yeah, boss. <laughs> Money is low. Staff voluntary. And the landlord wants me out. The people around here need this place. 
You know you can make that announcement and tell Bostick to kiss your ass if you put your mind to it. You know something, Charles? You a funny talking dude sometimes. <laughs> Seven years, yeah. and I saw all that meat on the table. I started to beat you to death myself. I'd have been home every day and sit out in Los Angeles eating these dried hamburgers, and they got whole hogs <laughs> on the table. In North Carolina, you must, you need to. Are you sick? You ain't been home in 27 years, and they say the ham each year for you and the turkey. And I went there in two days and tried to eat it all up, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, but I've got to leave you, sisters and brothers. Frankie J. Parker. The J is for joy, because that's what you get from Frankie J. The mind tripper, the mighty dipper, and the honey dripper. Lock up your daughters, girlfriends, and wives, Mr. Jones, because Frankie J is on his way. Frankie J in the morning. Frankie J in the night. Frankie J in your dreams. So fine, sometimes I want to kiss myself. Frankie J, joy, your messenger of enlightenment. After me, who remembers Aristotle? Listen to me with my bad, humble self. And don't forget to send your contribution to the New Community League to help these young people to help you to protect your community against the drug pushers. Send whatever you can. And if you're short on bread, that's cool. Write us anyway. The NCL, care of the Frankie J. Parker Show. Post Office Box 312, Los Angeles 90099. That's the NCL, care of the Frankie J. Parker Show. Post Office Box 312, Los Angeles, 90099. Later, sisters and brothers, bless you with joy, peace, and love. And now the KJLH News headlines. Six-year-old girl rescued from well she had fallen into earlier in the day in Compton. Another day, another dollar. When Frankie moves, all the women holler. Frankie J. Show. Oh, hello, Mr. Bostick. I'm sorry, but he left already, Mr. Bostick. I swear he did, Mr. Bostick. Uh, yes, Mr. Bostick. I will, Mr. Bostick. Goodbye, Mr. Bostick. One of these days, you're going to wear that man's patience down and find yourself on the streets without a job. Gloria, if that day ever comes, the women of this town will burn this radio station down. What's on the agenda for tomorrow? At 10 a.m., you're to speak to the students at Carver High School. Then you're to help Mr. Atkins at the NCL Center. Oh, yeah. Reverend Johnson called. He wants you to speak at his church on the fourth Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Church must be in some heavy trouble, huh? But you tell him it's cool. Show him and his congregation what paradise is. Give him a touch of paradise right here on Earth. Mmm, yeah. How's that hit you, Gloria? I think you're beginning to believe your own bullshit. <laughs> Later, baby. <laughs>
Because you walk funny. Then you're a freak for a funny walker. <laughs> anyway, I did hear you on the radio today. If you were listening to my show, then you had an experience. I produce, write, and direct my own material for both radio and television with the chit chat profundity of an angel interspersed with the best music played on the FCC airways. And the FCC has got to chat with me because I own the sky. Would you mind repeating that for me, Mr. Landlord of the Sky? <laughs> I can dig it, Miss, uh... Melinda. Melinda Lewis. Hey, that's some cigarette case you got there. Can I... say you could sit. I'm sitting because you are a lady from another town. You don't know anybody. You're beautiful, and I'm beautiful. So it's only natural that we would gravitate toward each other. How did you know I was from another place? Brilliant mind perceptions, that's what I am. Just another one of the things that makes me so special. <laughs> I don't believe you. And I don't think you're fool enough to believe yourself. All right, so I'm funny. Let's go. Where to? Party. You ever hear Tank Robinson? Tank owns this club. And he owns and runs Oregon Records, and he used to be ace football player. So you're up on football, too. Next thing you got to get hip to is Frankie J. Parker, all pro joy of the universe. Is there anything you haven't been or done? I haven't made love to you. Yes, you have. In your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> You're a funny lady, Miss Melinda. <laughs> Look, Tank is having this party on his boat. So let's do it, huh? OK, Mr. Frankie. But that's all we're gonna do. Uh, allow me. Mama! <laughs> 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 
<laughs> so, so I was sitting there watching this nigga, black, standing up over me with his right hand deep off into his pocket like he's going to come out of it with something bad. Well, I wasn't even thinking about it. I just told him to get out of my office. And he said, Tank, you ain't too big or too rich to get your ass kicked. <laughs> I said, if you ever dream you're going to kick my ass, they're going to call you peg leg the rest of your natural life. Frankie! 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 How you doing, baby? I'm fine, baby. Look what I'm growing in here. It's Melinda Lewis. Thanks. It's oh, my thing. goodness. She looking How's good. How's everybody? Oh, right. Party. Party. What is it? All right, make way. Let's go. Hmm. You got a spot right here, you know that? Well, it's a birthmark. Mm hmm And you can't kiss it away. No? Uh-uh. <laughs> I mean, it's always gonna be there. Forever. Champagne cocktail for you. Thank you. And, uh, <laughs> a scotch. And a scotch on the rocks for you. Here's to it. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to you. Robinson. Well, uh, thank you very much. I've done all right by myself. You know, I made it up in my mind the day I signed up for pro football that I was going to play it safe. I was going to make all the bread I could make in the game before some mean old lineman tore my leg off. I was going to quit and own a piece of this world. Look around you, Miss Melinda. Come on, look around you. I own a piece of this world. Yeah, but I'm prettier. <laughs> All right. All right, I'll drink to that. Something to think about. <clears throat> Sullivan uh, tells me he sent you a birthday present and you sent it back. You still throw me times, <laughs> Frankie. <laughs> I never tried to buy anything from you. That gift was for my heart. The only thing wrong with that is that one of these days, I might find myself in front of some investigating committee trying to prove what a big heart Tank Robinson's got, only to discover he had it transplanted with the heart of a midget. <laughs> uh, well, uh... Well, I guess I'll go check out some of these strange people at my party. Okay, baby. Tonight. Mm -hmm. Taking her home with you tonight. Hmm? 
Well, look, Terry, I'm not going through any of your shit tonight. You just think about that tomorrow when the sun hits you. Yeah. Look at Terry. I gave you something I've never given any woman. What? My time, baby. Time nobody else in the world could get for me but you. But what you wanted was some weak kneed faggot you could manipulate. Now, I can't cut that. So why don't we just leave it, huh? You don't fuck with me, and I won't fuck with you. Hey, good. Frankie, you know what? You bring this fine <laughs> woman up here for me to meet. She gets intellectual enough. <laughs> now, ain't that a bit a black woman? Getting intellectual on a nigga rich as me. Stop it. <laughs> Later, Tank. Glad I met somebody fine who could appreciate a fire. That's a fireplace. How about a drink? No. No champagne cocktail? No, thank you. <laughs> well, uh, you make yourself right at home, Miss Melinda, and I'll be right back in a minute.
joy I bring, babe. It's got more in it than that, Frankie. You know it. You're right. Yeah, it's to do with where your mind is at. Your involvement. That's how people should enjoy each other. It's like some hidden nerve that suddenly cracks on itself. And how can you do anything else but Jump up and down with elation. After that beautiful thing we went through last night. <laughs> you know, when I met you at Tank's last night, I just had to find out if there was something else other than jive time behind that false exterior you're so in love with. Mm. <laughs> How'd I make out? Heavy, deep, night, Frankie. 
That's the way you ought to think about yourself. Deep and heavy. God knows the world is too full of hustlers and pimps, freaks. Just plain old-fashioned losers. Anyway, it's nice to run into some soul for a change. And you've had them all, huh? Every last one of them. Frankie J. Parker, please. Yeah. Frankie? It's me, baby. How you doing? Fantastic. You know, your phone has been ringing ever since you left here. You listen to my show? You better believe it. Look, baby, I, uh, I gotta go take my television show when I finish up here. So I'll, I'll be a little late. Okay. Love. I love you, too. Whoever called us sure had it right. We got a real mess in there. A girl butchered to death. What's her name?
Melinda. Melinda Lewis. She's lying. Identification here says her name's Audrey Miller. Some of our men paid a visit to that hotel. The girl's room had been ransacked from top to bottom. Now, come on. A strange girl with no name. You're the only one that's been with her. Now, who else could have killed her but you? I told you, man. I got nothing to say till my lawyer gets here. Now, you call me officer. Man, I wouldn't wish this job on my mother-in-law. Let me get away from you, nigga. How you doing there, Frankie J? Hanging tough for tomorrow. They messed with you, huh? Yeah, sometimes they get carried away with their jobs, but they ain't bad. They're really nice fellas. It's the way the job goes, you know? Hey. Know something? I saw a man one time slap a jackass on his back with a whip. And that jackass reared up on his back legs and run across a field and run back to its master to be slapped again and said, one more time, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. A walking, talking jackass. <laughs> jackass. <laughs> Black son of a bitch. Your lawyers are out there with the writ. Go now. Goodbye. Nigga. Thanks for uh, them lawyers you sent down to get me out of that joint. The pig ass motherfucking cops are crazy, baby. Look, don't sweat it. Any time I can help a brother out, you know where I'm at. Uh, go on into the den. There's uh, somebody in there that wants to see you. Oh, yeah? Uh, I'll be right back down as soon as I cool off this bitch I got up in my bedroom. look tired. You're in trouble. Because you had to lie down in bed with that pretty face. Is that what you came here to tell me? Look, if for some freaky reason I still feel there is something deep between us, let us not forget. There's been something wrong. You see, I happen to feel that there's something very powerful about being a woman. And if I'm here because I love you, it doesn't mean I have to let you shit on me again. Tell me about it. All I know is that for the last two days, somebody's... Get it, Frankie. Some crazy pervert killed that girl, that's all. Now, my men are gonna take care of your case. You ain't got nothing to worry about. Who was this girl? Where did she come from? What was she doing here? Don't you know anything about her? All I knew was that she was from Chicago. I don't even know it was her they were out to get on me. But if somebody is out there trying to knock me off, I'll be damned if I'm going to just leave myself wide open to 
be kicked in the head by a bunch of sick motherfuckers who would chop a girl up the way they did. What's the trouble? My car won't start, and I just twisted my ankle. Shit. It's your startup, baby. What you need is a mechanic. Hey, but wait. I've got to get downtown in a hurry. Will you take me? I'll pay you. Wow. You will? Well, you better get on in this car, lady, before somebody else grabs you. Please, now, be careful now. You want to be careful now. Come on. Here, here you go. Come on. Here we are. Yes, ma'am. That's lovely. And I'll be right around the other side, man. Are you ready to go, to go now, man? This way here? By the way. Frankie, ma'am. Well, look here. Pistol packing bitch. You just keep driving and do what I tell you to do. Where are we going? I said we go where and when I say. Now drive, mister. All right, girl. Who sent you after me? I don't know anything to tell you. Now, look. Oh. Now, I am in no mood to be gentle to that woman. You better tell me something and tell me quick. What are you going to do? Hit me? Go ahead. Hit me. I don't care. I didn't want to go after you. They made me do it. Who they, goddammit? Who? 
I've got this problem. The problem is to keep myself looking like a woman, to keep myself alive. That's your problem. You're a junkie. There's this friend of mine, and he's always kept me straight whenever I needed this stuff. I got real sick the other night, and I went to my friend, but he refused me. He told me to die, and, and that scared the shit out of me. So I told him I'd do anything, and he took me to this black guy, Smith, and Smith sent me after you. He said you had something of his he had to have. He didn't say what it was, just to bring you to him, and he'd do the rest. They mentioned a girl to you by the name of Melinda Lewis or Audrey Miller? No. Where are you supposed to be taking me? I can't tell you that. I don't care what you do. I can't tell you. to me because I got to do them favors from time to time. This keeps my business going, man. Who? Uh, it's just business, man. I ain't never met him. Ah! Did they kill that girl? I don't know nothing about nobody getting killed, man. Ah! He just said that the girl ran away with something that belonged to him. And that she gave it to you. Where's Smith now? Ah! He split when the girl they sent after you didn't show up. I don't know where he's there, if he's coming back. I swear I don't. What good is your swears? You are dead, Pusher! <laughs> yeah, police headquarters. Police, you want to bag yourself a heroin pusher? You come to 4006 Romney Street, motherfucker. 
What is it? That girl? She's inside there, dead. What? You said you'd be here. I was, but there was no answer. The house was locked tight. I was worried, so I went to the gas station to call Tank. Tank? Yes. And as you bend down, keep your legs straight and place your hands up on the bone. Now spread your legs just a little bit longer. Like this tank. Like that tank. Now, when you feel I have the ball in my hand, well, then you've got to be able to receive brutal punishment from the opposing line. Okay. All right, now on four. Set, hike, one, two, three, three and a half, four. Ah! Now, wait a minute, Frankie. Wait my ass. You were the only one who knew I was using your pad. What are you talking about? Terry knew and uh, your old school buddy, uh, Charles, is that his name? He called me and I told him you were there. Frankie? No good, baby. I can see from here the cops got my place covered. Well, why don't we go to my place then? We can figure something out there. Won't work. Sure to check you out. I know what. Tanisha, my editor, she's in New York for a week. We can stay there. Yeah, all right. Sweat it too hard, Frank. Too much of that emotional rigmarole can kill you. Did I ever tell you about the woman who was always going to meet this man, and he was always going somewhere else? The whole trip became so involved, crushed a nerve in her mind. You know what was wrong with both of them? All they ever did was give each other their weaknesses. That's what kills people. Yeah. I gotta get some air, baby.
J tonight. Looks like you ran into a tractor to me, man. Tank, that man's crazy. I had to tell him some things. You had to tell him some things? I had to tell him some things, or he might have killed me. So you come here to me because you're scared shit of what Greg will do to you. Tank! Dirty! Low life bastard! What the fuck are you screaming about? I'm losing my patience with you, Frankie. Did he tell you what he told me about you? And I don't care what he told you. I'm in business, man. I got to deal with all kind of people. <coughs> people who go around chopping up girls? No, no, I didn't have anything to do with those girls getting killed. Frank, I don't want to hurt you. Nobody wants to hurt you. The way you've been going at this thing, it looks just like a man out of his head. What is it I've got that they won't tank? I don't know, Frank. I swear I don't know. Who is Mitch Tank? I... Who the fuck is Mitch? Mitch is my partner. He owns this club. He owns everything. So you helped them kill that girl? No, no. I didn't even see that girl until you brought her to the party. I swear, Frank, I... Ah! 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 Why did they kill a tank? She, she was Mitch's girl. She took something that belonged to him. I, I, I won't know what these people are after. I swear, Frankie, I swear. No wonder so many running backs got by you. You always hide. You were never there, motherfucker. <laughs> You mean to tell me you're going to make those men think you have what they're looking for? That's dumb, Frankie. That's the only way I'm going to stay alive, baby. As long as they think I got their merchandise, then they're going to have to deal with me. What kind of dealing can you do with a bunch of killers? You have no choices, Frankie. Go to the police or something. But don't play a stupid game with those men and get yourself killed. Over some party bitch. Oh, no. Oh, I should be sorry I said that. 
I love myself too much for that. If I want you, I want you for me. If I need you, I need you for me. If you put me in that bed and fuck me, I want it to be me and not some dead broad that you had just for two nights. Hell no, I'm not sorry, Frankie Barker. Good morning, son. I know how you feel, baby. I can appreciate it. And if my head ain't cool, then we'll get through that, too. That girl, Melinda, to live with that man, white man, she must have been in an awful lot of pain. To run away from it the way she did. Yeah. Why did he have to kill her? Mitch, I'm sorry. I mean, it couldn't be helped. She put up such a fight, she was yelling and screaming. He couldn't take the chance of her going to the police afterwards. Anyway, he did find out that she passed the bank note to the disc jockey. And you're sure it's in this bank? Couldn't be any other place. Mitch, what are we going to do about Tank? For the moment, I think he might be of some use to us. I want you to get him to me as soon as we find out what's going on in the bank. You're sure nobody in the bank can be bought? No, I tried, but those bank clerks are freaky bastards. Well, we'll see. Well, yes, Miss Miller did rent a box from us, but uh, I'm sorry, sir. I can't possibly let you into it. But she left it here for me. Now, look, sir, I am the owner of Mid-Century Enterprises. You saw those. Miss Miller works for me as an assistant. Now, the package she put into your bank is the property of the company. I flew all the way from Chicago for it. I can see your credentials are in order, sir, but uh, I'm afraid uh, even if you had the key to the deposit box, I couldn't possibly accommodate you. No one can get into that box but Miss Miller. I see. Is Miss Miller still in town? Of course not. If she was, you think I'd be here, having you to break my balls? <clears throat> Sorry, sir. Bank policy is bank policy. Good day. Sooner or later, this Frankie guy is going to come up with that key and figure out some way to get into that box. I want you to put two men outside here during bank hours. Will do, Mitch. You're gonna get me fired for my job yet, Frankie J. Don't worry about it, baby. 
when I get back to the office. Besides making Bostick give you a raise, I'm gonna let you sit on my knee now and then. I pick the knees I sit on. Just give me one more day, Greg. I'll work it out. Look, I just got off the phone with Mitch in Chicago. And his hands are starting to shake. You can't kill any more people, Greg. I'll, uh, I'll talk to Mitch. No, no. No more talk. Talk's all over. Well, if you'll just tell me what it is you're looking for. What's wrong with you, Tank? I just want you to do what I tell you to do, okay? Huh? Ray, my stomach's killing me. Will you give me those pills for me? You know, uh, Tank, I'm beginning to believe what people say about you. You know what they say about you? No. They say that underneath all that muscle, that you're nothing but a big blob of chicken shit, huh? Is that true? I don't even have to take that kind of put down from Big Ham. Thank you, Greg. Well, I never knew you had a nerve problem, too. You gotta have your doctor prescribe you some of those pills. No help. Mitch? Hiya. Oh, it's good to see you. It's been a long time. It's good to see you, Mitch. Uh, it's a surprise. Oh, is it a pleasant surprise? Oh, you betcha. I, uh, I spoke to your brother before I left Chicago. He told me to tell you everything is cool on his end. <clears throat> Look, Mitch, uh, when I borrowed that money from you, the deal was strictly legit. Uh, it didn't say anything about my doing the kind of things Greg has been asking me to do. But we are friends. And I am your business partner, right? Yes. Well, that's the way things are, Tank. I can't help that. And neither can you. Now, you know this disc jockey real well. You just tell me everything about him. Where his weak spot is. Who he loves and who he hates. I promise you. We'll make his legs bend just enough so tears will flow from his eyes. And he will voluntarily help us clear this mess up. And I won't have to turn Greg loose on him. Okay, Tank? Okay, Mitch. Greg. Your man Smith told that junkie too much last night. He knows a lot about my business with that union election incident, doesn't he? Yes, sir. Why? He makes me nervous. Find some excuse to send him to Kansas City. And give Roger a call to shower him with a warm reception when he gets there. You understand what I'm talking about, Greg? Look, Mitch. Smith is one of my most valuable men. He's a butcher! His orders were to get that package. He killed Audrey for nothing. You sent him to Roger, Greg. Sure, Mitch. Yes, 
Black Velvet publication. Excuse me, Bert. Was there anything in your box? Yeah. There's only one problem with it. This is a bank deposit box key. Right. And I can't get into that box. Nobody can but her, and she's dead. Let's face it, baby. I'm fast becoming a loser. Do you still have her license? Yeah. Give it to me. What? I said give it to me, Frankie, please. What's the license for? Audrey Miller is not dead, and she has this license to prove it. And you're thinking about... Going to the bank, that's right. Do you know how much time you get in the slams for defrauding a bank woman? Time, Frankie Parker, is merely a measurement between here and there, between now and tomorrow, and life and death. Yes, would you please sign here where the X is? I don't uh, quite get this, miss. I... No, it's just a statement in your own handwriting, testifying to the fact that you're not dead. Well, I'm not dead. You're not dead. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, now, may I see your identification, please? Thank you. Welcome. Um, would you excuse me a moment, please? Sure. I see you're back in town. Oh, yes. I was, uh, I was in Rome a couple of days. Oh. Yeah. You ought to try it sometime. No. <laughs> well, now, Miss Miller, have you any, uh, any other identification besides your driver's license? Look, isn't that enough? Well, you see, it's an out-of-state license, and the bank requires something local with your name on it. See, from your car rental receipt, you're uh, staying at the Central City Motor Inn? Yes. Mary, would you get me the Central City Motor Inn, please? Thank you. The Central City Motor Inn, this is Mr. Hawthorne from the Westland Bankers Trust. I'd like to verify a tenant staying at your motel. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Uh, this, this won't take long. She'll be right back, she said. I don't give a damn if she never comes back. Now, look, I'm getting sick and tired of this. Now, I walk in here, and you treat me like I'm some damn crook. Miss Miller, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong, my ass? You know what's wrong. Look, if I was a white woman, and I walked in here and wanted to get into my bank deposit box, I wouldn't have to go through half this shit. Hey, you shush. Shush, my ass, bitch. Now, look, I want my fucking property or my baroness bank down. 
down now, Miss Miller. There's no need to get excited. No, look, I don't want to hear it. Just take me to my stuff. <clears throat> uh, take her to her box, Miss Brown. Yeah. <laughs> scared the shit out of me. Yeah, but you did it, baby. You did it. Hold it. I don't understand this. Maybe she gave it to you as a gift. No, nothing like that. It says on it from Mitch to Audrey. This is solid gold, baby. It's got to be more than just a cigarette case. I know, but what? Even if I wanted to go to the police, this wouldn't help me. I am going to do one thing, though. What? I'm going to give it back to him, but on my own terms. few names in your day, old buddy. That second job you did on the white girl out at Robinson's Beach House was so messy, you left your prints all over the place. Now, are we gonna stay here all night? Or are you gonna give me a statement now so we can all get a good night's rest? <laughs> Pick up that phone! Put my foot in your face! Call your man and tell him I've got his package. But if he wants it, he's gonna have to meet me on my own ground. He'll meet you, but in his own territory. You tell him to be at Ferguson's flat in one hour. Or I'm going to the cops. He says to meet him at Ferguson's flat in one hour before he goes to the cops. Drink! Drink! Do what I told you to do. You got one hour on Greg. Kind of arch things up for you in L.A. Huh? In a way, yes. Well, I shouldn't have taken on that union job. I did need the money, but the scope of it was too much. The little ego man at the top of my brain wouldn't go to sleep. Why did Audrey turn on? I got an hour, Mitch, and no answers for you. Thank you. 
Gentlemen, if you please. your almost successful black union man, gentlemen. Uh, he'll no longer trouble you. And there's my faceless, little, weak, desperate man, my loser, my dispensable fool without a motive. And now he, too, is dead by the clockwork of my plan. A perfect execution. That's what it was. And I masterminded and orchestrated it all. I just wanted to show you gentlemen exactly what you have paid for. Yes? It's me, Mitch. I forgot my purse. Done, Mitch. Good. Call Tank. <clears throat> Tell him we'll see this man tomorrow morning at Rome's place. The morning? We don't have to rush now, Greg. We've got our disc jockey by the balls. He's got Terry, man. Don't you hurt that woman. Don't you put your fucking hands on her. Don't you touch her! Believe me, Frankie, do what he says. This man is not playing. Okay. Where do I meet him? He'll, he'll do it your way, Mitch. I got it. Okay, Mitch. I'm to take you to him tomorrow morning, early. <laughs> you know, Tank, I'm getting so tired of your shit. I may have to kill you yet. Don't worry, baby. You're going to win. Listen to me. 
to me. We're going to win. I don't know where they're taking me. So I'm gonna have to play this by ear. Which means that you're gonna have to keep a very close watch on all our movements. Don't worry about it. You just watch yourself. Good luck and power to you, Frankie. Thanks, Charles. I'm gonna need it. You are Frankie Parker, I'll bet. This is not the best kind of meeting for two men to have, but we do have some things to talk about. And you will have breakfast with me. Come. Sit. Not gonna join us. I didn't come here to eat no breakfast, man. Where's Terry? I've heard you were a direct man. Cut out the bullshit, man, and give me my woman. I'm sorry, Mr. Parker. You'll have to wait. The old tank wouldn't miss this meal for nothing. And Greg tells me the tank would either eat than fuck. <laughs> 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 and that's saying a whole lot. Am I right, big boy? Right, Mitch. A uh, blazer. My friends here are getting nervous. It's beautiful, isn't it? Of course, I've never been able to like this town. It's too uh, plastic for me. <laughs> so what do you do? You get on the phone oh. and have people killed from your 30th floor tower in old soulful Chicago. You're an arrogant bastard, aren't you? I'm a man that's scared and madder than your mama's husband. And if I don't see my woman soon, you're going to feel how mad I really am. You have my cigarette case? Yes. Hand it over. And you'll get your woman. You really think I'm stupid, don't you? I don't have it with me. You have to come and get it. <laughs> Not me. I'll send my men with you. Where is he? There you go again. Underestimating my intelligence.
You wait here. Where they keeping Terry Tank? Terry. Please get me out of here, please. Take her out of there. No. She stays there. But you keep that picture in your mind of her in there when you go with my men to return my property to. Let's go. This is one for the FBI.
I want to see what's in it. And if you don't show me, I'm going to feed you to them fucking snakes out there. What she didn't know was that she recorded that thing on a dirty tape. <laughs> now, ain't that a bitch? Yes. 
That's exactly what it is, mister. <laughs> Wake up, Mitch! Come on, let's go. Later, Frankie. I sure know how to mess things up, don't I? Hold Artie with you, Lynette. Yeah, but did anybody ever tell you that you are one mean, beautiful snake charm? Go on home. Come on. Makes fools and kings, oh baby. See life anew. Love is more than for the minute.
like when you get a little worried oh, 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 o